But can you use that side because like even a little wind sounds like hurricane. Like when you come back and play it like Nylon stocking? Nylon stocking. Yeah. Okay. That's that helps. And, and will muffle the voice? No, not nylon. That'll help. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get out of wind if you can. Sweet. Obviously it's no, really yeah. Monitor your sound. Use earphones if you can, because the person monitoring it will hear that and say, "Oh, you know what? We've got to get, you know, beside a building or something where you've got a bit of a windbreak, because that kind of stuff." Yeah, it's really annoying when you. And we know that you can actually bad image will pass a lot better than bad sound. We really we can't tolerate bad sound if you can't hear it. It's useless, you know, whereas if it's a little soft or a little underexposed or something, that'll pass. So really important to, to, um, to, yep, yeah, you can use a, well, a little headphone, but also a microphone jack, so you can plug in an external microphone and, um, and do, like, really great audio. If for a, for a, it's an HD cam, like I can't even believe it. I've, I've played around quite a bit with it. I've actually done workshops just with that camera because it's, it's cheap, it's fun, and excellent quality. And you can plug it right into your computer. Be aware if you're working with HD, it's a really heavy file format. So you have to have the equipment to be able to work with it. Don't just use it because you think, oh wow, it's HD. I'm gonna, you, know, you have to be prepared to ramp up to work in high definition. You get a much better image quality, certainly. Is it necessary for the internet? Maybe not. Something you have to sort of evaluate. Personally, I would say if you're just sort of starting out, don't use HD because it's, it's very heavy. The file sizes are much higher and uh, it's just a little bit more complicated to work with. Um, what else? Sound. Again, here's some audio production tools. I've been doing a radio show uh, for the past year or so called the Digital Life Show, and I've just rediscovered audio and totally fallen in love with it. It's so much fun to work with audio, and you're sort of liberated from all the complications of the image. And um, especially when you're working with young people, it's such a great way to get them engaged because it's much easier. And, um, you know, it's fun hearing yourself and playing back, and you can get really creative with some of these tools. Um, so it's a good place to start, also in terms of just recording and adding photos afterwards. Very easy to start with sound. Again, editing. The easiest free things you can work with, iMovie and Movie Maker. Um, really easy. I, in, a, in an hour sitting down with it, you can teach yourself to use it. How, how many people have had experience working with one of these two programs? Yeah, so many people. So I mean, you, can, you can talk about it. Uh, you know, if you want to get more into the professional, there's Final Cut Pro and all that, but if you're just doing uh, little things for your organization or in class, these are great. Um, more and more, we're starting to see browser-based tools coming up. And YouTube actually has now, if you have a YouTube account, you can use YouTube through a web interface to edit. And it's pretty powerful. I'm quite amazed. So you don't even need to use any of these external tools anymore. You can just work directly in your browser. And all the mashups we see on YouTube, you know, where you take a YouTube video and you add your own sound or your, you know, a lot of these are now being made with these YouTube uh, editing tools. So it's pretty easy, pretty fun, if you just want to fool around and see how that might work. Um, yes, it takes a bit of time to get to know these tools. You know, that's uh, something to decide if you want to actually get into it. You have to have a certain interest to want to get into those. If you don't, the important thing is still working through the stories, so just find somebody else who does. So, um, file formats and transcoding. Um, <laughs> most of these programs now will just do that for you, so you don't have to think about it, but you do have to think about what is the final outcome for your video. Is it something that's going to be distributed on your website? If so, there's file formats to think about, right? Um, uploading to YouTube or Vimeo or any of those other ones will only accept certain uh, file formats. But they're pretty common now, and most of, these, um, most of these softwares will just transcode for you on the fly. Sharing. So 
again, you wanted to decide right from the very get-go, before you even really start, what, are, what do you want to achieve with these? You know, the goals are pretty important. So if, you, if this is something you want to use to get the word out for advocacy or to talk about your organization, obviously sharing is really important. So you're going to make your video in consequence or thinking about your final audience. So if you want to share it, you've got to really work at sharing it because it's hard to get people. There's a lot out there. So you've got to really um, use all the tools in your arsenal to, to help spread the word. Yes, put it on Facebook. Yes, you know, email it out to your social networks. And, um, and I put in a slide here about outreach. This actually came from another presentation. Um, but I, I put it in here because it's really important, especially for organizations. Um, the me people who create the media are not always the people who are going to do the outreach on it. Did you have a question? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it really is about social marketing and about using these tools and promoting your works, getting it out there for your organization. You can't underestimate it. It's, it's a job in and of itself. I know in this morning plenary we were talking about, well, how much time does it really take? You know, our organizations, we're small organizations. We don't have time to be doing this. I would say even if you only do like, you know, 15 minutes, half an hour a day, take the time. Find the time in your communications plan or, yeah. I, and I threw this out to some people earlier on and it's a crazy idea, but pretty much uh, most of the communities across the country, the, uh, the school boards operate co-op programs and it's a great opportunity to get some, uh, some slave labor to do this sort of task. I mean, they're already what, uh, what in the military we refer to as subject matter experts. That's why right. not, uh, why not bring them in? They get, a, they get a win for themselves. They get to do something that's interesting that they're intrigued by. You get, like I say, a subject matter expert who knows what they're doing, yep. the nuts and bolts of it. And it's a win-win it's a and your budget doesn't take a hit. Absolutely. It's a good idea. Like a co-op program. Like a high school co-op program where the, uh, the students get high school credits for work experience. So they'll, they'll go out, they'll four days a week. Uh, that, that's the way it is back home. In Ontario, to go out uh, in the afternoon for the, the two credits that they normally uh, have classes for. They'll go out to uh, to a workplace, work on the job, and then uh, you know usually uh, Mondays or Fridays they'll have a, an in-class portion at the school. Mm -hmm. so, you know, four days a week you get a, a part-time person who can be dedicated to this sort of task. Yeah, even if they're not necessarily all the time in your organization, they can do this now from home, they can do it from wherever they are. Um, but that's a great idea. We use interns on Citizenship and Parallel Citoyen all the time. They're great. They get their credits and they're on the networks anyways. It's a great way to expand your networks uh, to bring them in. And um, yeah, they know the tools. So thanks for a good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to, um, to leave a bit of time. What, what time is it? Okay, we still have a bit of time. Um, I'm going to save this one because I was hoping we actually might have a look at this tool. We're all in front of computers, so we might as well dive in and, and get our fingers wet. And this one's a good one. I'm just going to um, show you tons of resources. I put them all in here. You'll see at the very top, that's where you can find this presentation. Uh, no, the slide share one. Let me see. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, right here. Um, yeah, there you go. So that's where you'll find this presentation. If you want it, those are the rest of my presentations. That's not the direct link to this one, but it'll be there. Um, so I tried to put in, I thought if there was anything that I could offer, it's resources so please take them I threw in tons there's tons more on my delicious I don't know if anybody use still use delicious I feel like a like a, I tell people that they're like oh you still use that I'm like yeah it's actually great for just keeping track of bookmarks so um, if you, you know I did a search also in delicious for digital storytelling tons of stuff out there again um, but it's if you want more there's lots out there and a lot of um, 
some of the ones that I find particularly interesting also are some of the newer ones, like the workbook project and all these transmedia ones who are really reinventing the whole notion of digital storytelling. So I thought, I thought those were pretty interesting as well. Okay, so let's get back to this one. First of all, before we dive into this, anybody have any questions or comments or observations or? I guess part of your planning would be how long this thing is going to be, right? Because see something on YouTube, if it's, if it's more than two or three minutes, it, it better be darn good to keep you there. Absolutely. The samples you showed, they were all very short. Well, I did that also because we don't have a ton of time here in the workshop. But yeah, generally speaking, um, for a digital story like this, unless you want to get into like a real sort of um, fiction or, or you know or documentary, also that's a, sort of another medium. Um, yeah, five to seven minutes max, two to three ideally. If you're just going to do a little promo piece for your organization, depends again on your goals. That it always depends on your goals. You know, you, you have to start before you dive into anything. You have to really sit down with your group and have a good think and a good talk about what you want to achieve with your, with your story. So no matter what you're doing, that's always the starting point. Any other comments? Or? How many people are planning to actually get out and do something or would like to within the next year or so do some? OK, so we're all there. We're all you know, trying to jump in and do some. So you know, I strongly encourage people to really just get your feet wet. Pick up a camera and start playing around. And, and I said, like, on one of my slides there, you know, I've used also um, my cell phone camera, my little Canon point-and-click camera. There's a video option on it. You can use that. Um, whatever you got. Obviously, the results will uh, depend on the, the quality of the thing that you have. You want to think about lighting situations for cameras that aren't that great. You know, low lighting, not as great. But... Um, Cameras all, all around, it's not a question anymore of finding a camera to use. So let's jump into uh, VoiceThread. Um, VoiceThread, anybody heard of VoiceThread? Anybody know it? Yeah, okay. Has, have people worked with it before? Okay, well, I was hoping that we'd uh, use a little bit of time here today to actually get into VoiceThread. Oh, there it is, I have it. So I thought I found this one because it's a digital story. In my day, we did storytelling on street corners and sidewalks with costumes and props. I hear these 21st century digital natives are using technology to sell stories. They're even using them in school to get grades and to find their voice. Hmm. Oh. So I am the wizard. Oh, was. Riggy Smorgy. You can't hear that very well, can you? So the idea behind uh, photo voice, it, or voice thread, sorry, is um, it's a collaborative storytelling tool. So you can use um, text and images, photos, film, um, and you can interact with the image as well to create digital stories all through your browser. You can share them with other people. Marco Torres of the San Fernando School District is one of the nation's leading gurus on digital storytelling in classrooms. His student production company, SFET, has won numerous awards and corporate sponsorships, and every year he features a student film festival where some amazing short stories are produced. So you see you can get right in there and draw. Jack Casey of Boston International High School has also done some amazing digital storytelling with his students.
Here you can see a young social studies teacher, Sarah Dwyer, working with her students on their photo story projects. 